Today we're taking a look at the Athens Genesis HO scale Union Pacific 844. This is one of America's most famous steam locomotives and it's actually still in operation today. This locomotive has a 484 wheel arrangement with four leading wheels, eight driving wheels, and four trailing wheels so all together it's a 484. But yeah let's get started here in the front. Alright so on top we have the bell which doesn't move, number boards on the sides, some marker lights, a headlamp in the middle with an emblem down below. There's a lot of molded in detailing and you can see the latches to open up the smoke box which is is this entire gray section here which has this nice metallic sheen to it. You can see it's painted a different color from the rest of the body which is black. Then we have the smoke deflectors on the sides. It's basically designed to push air up so the smoke lifts away from the locomotive when it's moving. So it is hollow on the sides. There's also some riveting detail in the front corner. Railings on the sides and one in the middle. A box here with some molded in details and a bit of white gunk there. Then at the bottom we have the cow catcher pilot, a coupler cut lever above, some molded in air hoses, and there's some steps to get up on the sides. And if you want to, you can actually swap this with an actual coupler in the slot. So a cool little feature if you rotate it to the left, it has this built in coupler. And by the way, it only opens from one way, so it's kind of stuck like this. You can't go further than that. And if you try to hook it up with an actual coupler, you'll find out it doesn't actually work. It doesn't have the functional parts, so it's just for display. All right, so now let's go take a look at the sides where we have the leading wheels. There's this brown residue on it. I'm not sure exactly what's it for, whether it's a weathering or some kind of oil, but it is uneven. This truck can also rotate from side to side. And above it, we have the air compressor for the air brake system, the cylinder in between the wheels. This locomotive uses the wall shorts valve gear. It has a nice intricate design with lots of little parts and coupling rods attached to the driving wheels to rotate it to propel the locomotive. There's also this white wall trim around the wheels and brake shoes on one side and some sanding lines. And I don't know what this box is for, let me know down in the comments. Then we have this white sill across the running board and a bit underneath the cab. Some molded in details and some pipes on the bottom which go all the way underneath the cab. And there's also this railing that goes all along the top of the boiler. Then we have some more molded in detailing. You can see there's two steps inside and on the bottom there is the firebox painted in gray. There's a lot of riveting bumps here, some pipes and other details, and there is a gap above the truck. So the trailing truck is actually only attached towards the front. If you lift it up, you can see there's like a spring over here to push it down and you can rotate it from side to side. Then next up we have the cab, front window here, and a side window. And this window here is actually indented so it goes in a bit and it is see-through so you can see a bit of a cab. There's some multi in detailing. It says the road number and FEF3 is the class. It has 80 inch driving wheels and the weight on the driving wheels. UP for Union Pacific. On the roof there's a rod on the side and some rivets. Then at the bottom we have a triangle and some cables. Here's the range of motion with the tender. It can move side to side and rotate around. The back of the cab does have these doors with these windows and grab irons on the sides. And the roof also has a hood shape here. And now let's go take a look at the tender. This is where they store the fuel and the water. In the front there is a ladder to get up to the cab which was a separate piece. An access panel here and a compartment for the fire hose. Lots of molded in rivets where they store the oil. And on the bottom we have the leading truck here with two axles which can rotate from side to side. Alright next up we have the Union Pacific lettering logo. Even more riveting detail. And there are five pairs of axles at the bottom which is quite a lot and they actually named this the centipede tender. All right, so now let's go check out the rear. There's a ladder running along the edge. It says the road number UP844, a tail lamp at the top, and some grab irons on the side, more molded in detailing, some tiny text about the capacity at the bottom, more grab irons, a knuckle coupler, and the coupler cut lever. And there also is a hanging train line hose. So one difference on this side of the tender, they have this box in the middle, some piping above the wheels, the compartments like the other side, and on this side underneath the cab, there's a bit of different detail at the bottom, quite notably this red hand wheel. Lots of different pipes and detailing. There's also some dots going along the boiler. And there's a Z-shaped rod that's known as the throttle rod controls a valve. And here's the reversal lever which the engineer will pull on to make the train go backwards. And here's the rest of the front. Alright so now let's go check out the roof detail. So in the front we have this box here. I'm not sure what it is. Let me know down in the comments. Then we have two smokestacks which the inside you can see a bit of copper metal. You can see it's packed with pipes, beams, riveting detail. In the back there's even a whistle, colored brass, little grab irons, some kind of valve here, and a big sand box with some molded in details. Then we have this separate brass part here and the running boards on the sides have see-through holes. Then over here we have two turbo generators or dynamos. That's actually how steam locomotives generate electricity to turn on their headlights. Then we have housing for the blowdown separator and the steam turret. And another cool feature you can actually open up this cab vent on top. Now I only open up to this angle but you can actually go farther than that. 
Now let's go check out the tender. So from above, you can see this walkway has see-through grates. There's the oil dipstick that we installed earlier, railings on the side, a tender toolbox, and three water filler hatches with some riveting detail around. So here's how the interfaces look like disconnected, and this in-between platform can actually swing up and down. So here's the front of the tender, it's mostly molded in detail with the exception of the grab irons, and this thing goes in a bit. Now let's go take a look at the bottom, so here's what that looks like. There's a bit of lubrication oil in the middle, and here's the back. Now where you're holding it, it may be awkward because the trailing truck kind of sags down, but I later learned you should actually support it from the bottom and it's fine. Alright, now let's go take a look at the bottom of the tender. The leading truck is quite flexible so it can rotate and go side to side. And and the other axles that are mounted to the frame, they can actually move in their place, which is probably necessary to turn curves. So these are both American locomotives from two different eras, one of the last American steam locomotives versus the modern day diesel locomotive SD70 ACE. Height wise, they're relatively similar, I guess the same loading gauge. And if you look at it from the side, you can see the steam locomotive is vastly longer than the diesel because of this tender holds the fuel and water, while diesels are more compact. I also learned the cab heights are quite different, the modern day diesel is much taller than the steam locomotive. Without power, you can actually move the valve gear a little bit from side to side, but then it does lock up. Now I was curious on what would happen if I remove its tender and it turns out you do need the tender to function as it probably has the controls but you can still light up the number boards. So this is my first American steam locomotive UP844 is one of the most iconic American steam locomotives alongside Big Boy, Challenger, Norfolk and Western 611, Southern Pacific 4449 so I am glad to have it. It's cool to see the wall shorts valve gear in action it definitely looks a lot more animated and interesting to look at than a diesel but it does cost twice as much so it is expensive but it makes sense seeing 
including all the complex mechanism and parts, and also the size, it's quite huge. There are a couple of cool interactive features like the swappable cow catcher coupler, the openable cab roof vent, and the swinging footplate. Having this model did help me learn more about steam locomotive anatomy like the dynamo turbo generator and the throttle lever. I do like the metallic sheen texture on the smoke box and it runs pretty fast. Now for the cons, there was some quality control issues like one of the tender wheels being loose and this random white gunk in the front. I've also looked at some pictures of the real Union Pacific 844 and the tender appears to be missing a rear light embedded in the body and the stands on the sides as well as these pipes at the bottom. This model is supposed to be a modern representation from 2017 in excursion service not from the 1950s which might have looked like this so I think Athern cheapened out and didn't include these modern details which is unfortunate because I think adding all these details would improve this model. The back is a bit plain without it. But yeah that's pretty much it for the video. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. By the way, I actually found out how to fix my Walters Amplify car from derailing on curves. And in the past, I tried tightening up the truck or adding lubrication. That helped a little, but it didn't entirely solve the problem. And the solution is actually quite simple. You basically unscrew the truck, take it out, and just rotate it so it's the other way around. The trucks are virtually identical, so it doesn't really look different either. And just screw it back in, and it started working fine. If you have a similar issue, maybe you can try this out. Just flip the truck the other direction. Overall, pretty happy I got this resolved because I would not run these Walters and fleets even though they're a lot more detailed than Bachman just because one of them would always derail so now I can run it whatever I want.